Hello, I will be sketching a triceratops, uh, mainly focus on the bone structure to show you how I approach sketching bones. I'm um, starting off right here with a very simple side view, just trying, trying to get the rough proportions in there and the big features of the triceratops being the head, the rib cage area, which I'm doing right there, the legs, the sp and the spine. And this is sped up so that we can just see how I go through the process because I go through it multiple times. And I'm sketching with marker first because it allows me to make some mistakes and then correct them when I go to ink. This sketch that I'm currently working on is going to maintain, be a simple sketch so we can see just the rough uh, forms that I'm using to get the 2D shape of the triceratops. And right now I'm going to move into sketching the Triceratops in 3D. So I'm starting again with a circle, but uh, to me this circle is now a sphere. And that line that I sketched back and that little dot, those are reference points as I try and set up my perspective. So that cross was for the shoulder blades, uh, where they go uh, on the left and the right side of the dinosaur. And this little box right here is to give my reference point from the shoulder blades down to the ground and now I'm sketching the upper arm and the lower arm with those little sticks just to help me set up the perspective of this uh, creature and that way it helps me then sketch in other views later on and still have some sense of perspective when I do that by using this basic sort of stick structure. So that little circle right there was to help me figure out where the uh, hip bones are and the box on the ground, similar to sketching a chair, just helps me make sure that they are all working out together again in perspective. So there I'm going the upper leg, the lower leg, and you see I'll, again I'm starting off with just these little sticks because they're much easier to correct and work with uh, as we get more and more complex forms going on here. So now that's the rib cage, and you see right I'm not drawing individual ribs I'm drawing just the rib cage as if it was one solid massive structure, or like a cylinder of some kind. And what that does, it just allows me to keep it simple at first, focus on big forms, big shapes, big proportions, not small little details such as individual ribs. The uh, head here is getting a little foreshortened because of perspective, but mostly it still looks kind of drawn, you know, very similar to how I sketched it in 2D right there. I believe I'm going to come in I'm going to lower the ground plane for this because uh, my original sketch proportion was a little off. So I'm going to lower the ground plane uh, of where the feet are for the triceratops uh, so that uh, the front and the back line up. Adding a little bit of the shoulder blade there. Imagining how it wraps around the uh, rib cage over there. And very shortly, I think I'm going to add the back leg in there. All right, this just about finishes the sketch of the Triceratops in 3D. So I'm about to uh, speed up the video as I go and fill out the layout here. So I'm looking at sketching the leg so we can do a little demo of some hatching uh, and texture of the bone material at the end of the video. And then I'm going to look for how I'm going to sketch the head on the page here. Initially, I planned to do it in 3D, but then I realized I want to do a quick 2D study, larger than my previous ones. At the same time, I'm oversimplifying the form, eliminating curves, focusing on a little bit more geometric forms, which helped me get to this sketch right here. Right, So it's very geometric and breaking down the sides of the Triceratops. This is informing me, helped drill in my mind you know, what the, how I might light this, how I might add texture and hatching to this later on. Now it's time to pick up the pen and go over all this marker work that I've been doing with the pen, bring a few details into focus. All right, so I start off with my very simple sketch of the Triceratops, just to drill that form again back into my head. I've now sketched the Triceratops one, two, three, four, five, six times uh, before I even went into pen. Six, six times a marker and now I'm doing in pen. Uh, and with that first sketch that I ended up doing a little bit more detailed than that's the second one, 
you know, that's where I'm going into the, the adding volumes and mass to all these stick structures that I, that I put up there. So, you know, sketching each bone section and at the same time doing a lot of editing. So you see me you know, really quickly uh, getting the outline and silhouette of the spine in there and then just suggesting, you know, each little break up instead of going in there and doing each individual uh, spine section. Uh, you can see that I'm with the pen right there. I'm going up to that marker line, so that marker helped provide me a sort of guideline for how I'm going to put in the uh, parts of the rib cage. So now I'm moving to 3D, adding something to the shoulder there. Uh, again, I'm, hopefully I'm going to add in some uh, contour lines on some of the bone structure, I'm trying to sketch some of the components and features that are closer to me that I know won't be obscured by other uh, pen lines uh, after, later on. Uh, again, so front leg, back leg, and the femur, and then the lower leg. Uh, looking up there at the head now, just getting a little subtle detail. I like some more of the hip bone right there, again with the spine, making more of a process and almost like manufacturing, you know, sketching through the uh, shoulder blade right there, the back leg. And now, we'll finish up these heads, just going over my marker work at this point, nothing too spectacular about it. Try to keep a clean line as much as possible, rotating the page, being a little more selective about if I go over all the lines with my uh, pen or just some of them a chance to correct a few of the marker lines that I did or double check to be sure if they are exactly where I want them to be. So now the video is going to slow down to normal speed again and I'm going to be working on this uh, front leg but in sketching this front leg uh, the goal of slowing it down is to see just how long it actually takes me to do the sketch over the quick speed Again, overall this video, this actually took me 24 minutes to do this entire page that I'm showing you, uh, but the video itself is 10 minutes uh, sped up in, in certain sections. So speaking of sections, so right here I'm doing the feet and I am looking at every like single little bone on the foot there. The great thing about the foot is that it allows me to do some contour lines where the different bone sections segments are. And then I can, after I get all these little segments in there, those sections, they help me to put in the hatching, which is why I'm putting those sections that you just saw me right there put in. And so I know the form so I can more quickly do the hatching without having to think about it as much. These little lines that I'm doing in there are, because I'm looking at a reference photo, I can sort of use that um, of where there are some form breakups, where there are some lighting breakups. And now I'm just doing the hatching on the bone here. And with that, like just a little hint of some of the form with the hatching, uh, using and the contour lines as guidance, leaving a little space for some reflected light. The other thing about hatching on uh, the bone, because of the texture of the bone, I have like multiple hatching strokes kind of going in sometimes different directions when we, because the bone has kind of been like ground away a little bit like a stone, so it's not like completely perfectly smooth. So it's okay to have, again, some of the hatching kind of go in slightly different directions. We'll see that a little bit in this spot right here where I'm putting the shadow in there. And then we'll see it again at the top of the bone uh, as I put a few more uh, hatching lines uh, in there. And all of this uh, is, while I did have reference in front of me, I changed the lighting scenario so I sort of had to make it up on the fly. And a little, so there's a little bit that's off with the lighting that I could have spent more time with, but for just a quick indication of form, you know, this works out uh, fairly well. Uh, so I am now making a few thicker lines uh, by going over my previous lines using the same pen. I probably should have switched to an M instead of using the same one. It would have made that a lot easier. So here. You see me doing like the small little strokes 
and in just slightly different angles because again the bone is like all these little facets that are facing different directions and with that I am about done uh, with this page all right so after reviewing that first uh, part of the video I realized that I think I needed a bit more demonstration of using the simple construction of the dinosaur in perspective and so this is a speed up in about three minutes of 20 minutes of sketching uh, dinosaurs or well, the tricerat triceratops uh, using the again the perspective of where the shoulder and hip placement and heads are uh, to sketch it in a couple different views uh, you, so you can see me you know just going through the marker even with that first sketch that I just finished you know that I had set the ground line and realized my perspective was that the triceratops was a little bit too chunky uh, so I thinned it up by lowering the ground line and then extending the the proportion of the legs to balance that one out more this uh, then the sketch that I just finished you know from a slightly different view trying to plan out for fitting it on the page you know I can't put the tail on the page the tail is not the most important thing so I felt that was kind of an okay thing to kind of edit out and go off the page and now this sketch that I'm working through right now a slightly different view than the one above it you know I'm trying to squeeze one last little sketch on there you know, with this uh, bottom sketch right there you know setting up the box first just to make sure that I can fit it on there and even then making some adjustments uh, to it another thing you'll see me doing right now as I add the pen to all of this marker work is I'm trying to keep it much simpler in so much as not drawing all the bone structures in there and also doing some big contour lines on the larger sections like the upper arm and the lower arm there. I, I do get a little detailed in, in some areas where there's a lot of things meeting up such as back here in the spine and and then just kind of hinting at details uh, over up in the hips right here but because it's farther back I know if I was to add any more detail to that larger sketch it would be mostly on the head over in the back uh, hip area. So it's okay to leave it a little little vague and undefined. You know, another view, another sketch might be a, a better way to resolve that. So you can see the small little sketch right there. Again, much simpler than the larger one in terms of blocking larger shapes together. And now it just should get easier and easier each time because this view is slightly different than the ones before it, but similar enough that I can benefit and gain confidence from those prior sketches. All right, um, that's about it for this section here. Again, of just sketching it from some different views, but I really want to emphasize again using that perspective construction as an underlay before going in and adding details to the triceratops. All right. And with this page here also sped up at about four times speed, I'm just drawing one of the shoulder blades from the Triceratops. And what I'm trying to do right now is get in some contour lines and divide up the uh, shoulder blade into some different sections. And now with the second sketch, I'm taking the same approach, but I'm being a bit more dramatic about the divisions trying to create these facets like it's kind of like a stealth fighter not that I'm trying to redesign the blade into a stealth fighter but the idea of that there is these different faces of the uh, shoulder blade that are surfaces that are facing different directions so as I finish up sort of putting all these little surfaces of this in a more polygon shape you'll see me add some arrows to it to show you how each surface is kind of facing a different direction and then after that, I will go and use that knowledge, right? So there's the first arrow, right? like this, right? All these are facing slightly different directions. So the lighting on them is gonna be fairly different because this has all these little facets and surfaces that are facing different directions. And this is something very common that you'll see in bones because of how rough um, they are from, you know, being in the ground 
and rubbed up against different uh, surfaces. So now, right, I'm going in there and hatching, you know, one little section, and then I'll go in and hatch another at just a slightly different angle, even if it's the same value, and that creates a certain depth to the sketch in capturing, you know, how the bone is this multifaceted surface. Uh, so along with, again, uh, hat, different hatchings that are right next to each other, but sl facing slightly different directions, I'll also sometimes start very thin and close together with the spacing on some of these um, surfaces here, and then sort of spread them apart as maybe the surface gets lighter or turns into a different direction. And I'm, again, using my reference as a... a just a, not a, something I'm trying to copy, but as my starting point and then making editing in terms of what I think looks like a good sketch. So I'm no longer following the reference just as an exact copy. I'm just using it to help inform me and make some quick decisions so I can have a fairly nice looking sketch that captures some of the character and details in the bone. So now I'm adding some thicker line weights on some surfaces and coming in here really quick with some pencil and some highlights for some contrast being sure to leave some value of the page on there because that way we have again the darks of the, of the hatching, the value of the page, and the highlights we have at least three values, a little bit more with the gradations that I'm doing. So that's more detail on hatching. I hope this was informative and helpful.